right, everyone. Thank you for joining in. And uh, once again, um, to one of our uh, very uh, hopefully interesting podcasts, uh, webcasts, sorry, that, that we're doing uh, with you guys. So today's topic, um, we'll dive right into it. It's the dig digital ecosystem. So how can we reduce um, the time to engineering? So this is one of the uh, very big topics that we have um, in our environment nowadays. We're not just one department, we're multiple departments. Uh, ideally, we need to share information in a seamless way, so data is key. Um, this is one of the aspects that we talk about a lot uh, in the industry. So before we begin, um, as always, my name is Sergio Brinkhouse. And my name is Andrew Fortenberry. I will be manning the chat bar. So please do not hesitate. Do not be afraid. If you have any questions throughout this entire live webinar, shoot me a message on the chat. I will politely interrupt Mr. Sergio. And if not, then I'll, we will do a whole Q&A session at the end. So sit back, relax, buckle your seat, buckle your seat belts, and enjoy the show, Mr. Sergio. Back to you. Thank you, Andrew. All right. So as we mentioned, uh, the idea here is basically to do um, type of round trip engineering. Try to find ways to simplify tasks and make sure that every department has some sort of same language um, and and you know understanding, and not necessarily like language barriers. Um, one of the business aspects that we're looking at uh, nowadays are different uh, areas in, in our engineering. Um, our company is very big. We have a whole bunch of uh, people uh, that do different things. So there's different integration aspects and so on and so forth. And one of the benefits that we have here uh, looking at the ePlan platform as a whole is um, our everyday life. How do we break that down um, in the ePlan space. So from concept to eng basic engineering, mechanical controls, production, building, and eventually to commissioning. One of those key aspects is to um, uh, talk about the ePlan platform and how this whole thing uh, maybe help you guys make sense of it all. So the ePlan platform, as you can see, uh, very interestingly and very, very uh, yeah, easy to say would be uh, it's just basically a bucket of information. And that's where we're going to be dropping in our information to have access to it um, whenever we need or we require it. One of the topics here, of course, is to discuss about the different aspects of the applications that ingest information and inject information also into the ePlan platform space. This is a uh, um, uh, ePlan pre-planning, of course. This is the application for the pre-planning aspects, whether you're doing um, water treatment, um, where you're breaking down your pre-planning phases, where you're setting up all your data sheets for PCT loop. So everything that encapsulates anything on the pre-planning side of things, your PNI diagrams and whatnot, or your MCC, you know, organizations and so on and so forth. How can we bring this into this env environment and how do we in inject that information into the platform? We're talking about motors or sensors, conveyor systems, hydraulic cylinders, you name it. All this data that we're jotting down prior to getting our projects out, we're injecting that into the project. And of course, um, another aspect of our applications, we uh, have the ePlan fluid. And of course, from all the different aspects of our uh, production, whatever machine that we're looking at, there might be different moving parts. And obviously these moving parts uh, using, uh, you know, whatever be pneumatics or fluid, um, need to be controlled, of course, and need to be documented. So that's one of the benefits here is having the application that will be able to send that information seamlessly into this environment, generating documentation for part data and whatnot. Um, yeah, ePlan Electric P8, similar concept, similar basis. We're talking about um, single line diagrams for electrical components. We do have fluid, we do have PNI, but we also need electrical to tie all that in together and of course this is a means and way to basically add that information into the ePlan platform to be able to communicate seamlessly and back and forth so depending on the different levels of your documentation um, that's one of the benefits what are you doing IEC what are you doing NFPA the standards are, are are in there and basically you can benefit from having all this in one seamless environment of course documentation uh, also would include uh, the aspects of the panel design. So if we're looking at the pro panel aspects of the tool, we're looking at basically all your prototyping space, right? So when you're designing your panels, when you're creating the different information that is required to put these um, stuff into the panels, whether it be, you know, uh, copper uh, implementation, copper bends, 
what are you doing uh, fluid um, you know, pneumatic hoses and piping all this information needs to be captured and also needs to be shared with the different departments right so what are we doing some routing uh, afterwards the the length information the production levels this is all going to come into play when we start to produce the documentation out of it and again this all is living with inside the same platform we move on to the harness pro d aspects so the harness pro d of course when we're doing harness design it's another uh, another realm what are you doing 2d or 3d harness design we need to create nailboard documentation we need to create bill uh, bill of material and information there might have uh, a need to communicate this information either coming in from the uh, electrical environment either going out to the harness environment and back and forth and whatnot this is something that is crucial to all the different departments so whether you're doing uh, nail board design, whether you're doing uh, pre-production, and of course, whether you're doing uh, 3D uh, uh, modeling in the sense that you're trying to create this harness in these uh, closed spaces. And of course, you need tools to be able to do those things. So it all is part of the ePlan platform environment. We move along to our cloud-based tools. So whether you're doing uh, pre-configurations in a cloud-based space, whether you're doing uh, a data uh, a retrieval of information from the ePlan data portal, you need components that need to be spec'd out. All this information that is out there is always communicating constantly with the ePlan platform space. And of course, from this environment, once we have all that information, we can start to talk about exporting this information in high levels of documentation, send this information out to ERP PDM systems, um, you know, whether you have uh, PLCs and stuff like that, this information will always uh, be integrated. And also for production aspects, if you're doing your panel design machine, uh, your, your NC machines, your wiring machines, wire cutting machines, and so on and so forth, PLC integration, what all the different PLC uh, uh, programs out there. The idea really is to have a one-stop shop and not because it's, it's one person that's doing it per se, but at least if everyone's talking the same language, this, uh, you know, the production of our machines will be that much more uh, quicker and more productive and, and efficient. And of course, the idea to be able to put this information of the project into the cloud for maintenance purposes is also key and huge for for everyone out there so let's take a look at it so as always we have our, our e-plan space we will begin a project so we'll start a project and we'll call this uh, webcast demo choose a template so these are all basic aspects of the e-plan realm um, the system will create a project and that project will contain certain basic attributes so if you have certain basic specifics like cover sheets um, if you have any basic, you know, um, uh, schematic sheets and whatnot, this information can be already captured. So the pre-engineering aspects are things that you guys are already doing. We're just capturing them, reusing them in future projects. If we move on to the electrical side of things, so if I actually decide I want to create a new uh, schematic sheet, so I'll go move along here, create a new schematic sheet. I'll select here to be a multi-line sheet, and this will be a motor page. And of course, ePlan offers you um, the aspect and the capability of being able to give you um, the documentation that you need and, the, and everything, all the tools that you need to produce this. And of course, here I can also change the different representations if I'm doing uh, single ladder pages. Um, so I'm going to use here a one ladder diagram page where I'm going to start to work. So the aspects here of, of doing your design are very easy, intuitive uh, features to use. Of course, we can start to develop and, uh, and create or design when we start to insert symbols. So if we do the basic aspects of, of production, we'll start to insert symbols from various libraries that are available to you and to the user. One of the aspects that we have here, of course, is to be able to input data uh, automatically, which is basically the system that's taking charge and assigning the uh, device tag information and whatnot. From these aspects also one of the crucial benefits that we have is the capability of having this information that you need to put into the project in a multilingual space so that's another key factor so um, if we're looking at um, different documentation that we need to share with different countries this could be crucial for a lot of uh, our users we hear this as a comment from our users already that they benefit from being able to seamlessly um, convert the projects into different languages so if I decide here to say, uh, I don't know, I'll just put in a word here, motor soft start. 
whatever information you want to display. The information gets displayed because you're working in an English environment, but you do have the capability of selecting the text. And of course, ePlan offers you a multitude of different feature functionality. So from a user standpoint, it always um, gives you space for growth and produce automated feature functionality. Due to the fact that we have a multilingual uh, environment, I can input the information in the different languages that I choose to have, or I can pick from a dictionary. Um, this is a little tool, which is, is a scripting tool um, that um, uh, one of the ePlan users out there uh, created. So the ePlan community is vast. When you go jump into the forums, when you start to talk and share information with all the diff different ePlan users out there, some ePlan users are really creating some really interesting stuff. So if I grab this as an example, and I grab the text information here, and I just uh, hit my my um, uh, my information to output this uh, this data, um, yeah, I cannot actually look here and and look at the translation information, copy it. With you, the script will open up my my web page, and I can actually input that information now into the German space. So now that I have this information inputted, what I can now do is just basically flip the language. So depending on where my project will eventually end up, um, or if I have to generate documentation, the multilingual aspects of the tool are huge for a user, right? So you can just basically flip and toggle, and this is throughout the whole project. Now on the aspects of looking for part information, one of the benefits of using the ePlan environment, as we talked about earlier, is the fact that we can access um, different uh, realities of component information that we might require. So one of the component that I might need would be probably the Schneider electric part for a soft start that I need here. And basically what I can do is I can actually access a configurator. The beauty about using this tool will give the user different, um, I guess different uh, uh, tools or different uh, environments that will allow you to basically do this uh, task in one space. The way that you would have to proceed normally would be that you'd have to go to the uh, you know, manufacturer's website, go through their configurator, or or maybe go through a catalog if you don't have access. I can do this all within one uh, realm. So here I can select my soft start, select the different data required to build up my components. So I'll select the options that I need. This will be calculating in the background. And again, the benefit here, of course, is that we're doing this all in one seamless environment. So based on the configuration that I selected, I can add this component into my shopping cart. I have a, a ready-made shopping cart with some stuff that I have in it, and having access to the data portal information will allow you to basically have access to this information, uh, whether you're using the data portal on a web browser and you're adding these components into your shopping cart. When you open up ePlan, you can actually basically grab that information that you had in the shopping cart and now use it in your ePlan project. So I'll go ahead and insert this component, bring that in. And basically from this environment, if I toggle through the different variations, the data portal gives you different macro uh, variations. So it could be a different representation type and different variant. Um, in this case here, I'm just gonna go ahead and position it and place my object in there. My object gets placed, I can reposition, reassign, do whatever I need to do. Very intuitive ways of, of connecting these objects. Another interesting aspect of this uh, tool could be um, duplication. So when I need to design or draw real quick, I can duplicate all this. I can put another one down here, hit the X to lock my ortho so that I'll be nice and uh, centered. And this basically will also tag and update my information on the schematic side. So very intuitive tools to use. Another interesting aspect of the data portal too is the fact that uh, in some cases you can actually grab file data and import it into your project. So from this environment, you can grab an Excel spreadsheet which has already component information and bring it in. I'll say here, delete uh, the, the shopping cart so it'll be all nice and clean. It will read in my Excel spreadsheet with the bill of material information maybe that my customer sent. I can scan it through the data portal. It will find it, maybe not all. It gave me 13 records of, of the 13 records that only found 12. So there's one that's missing. I'm gonna have to do that on my own, but at least 13 is not, uh, 12 out of 13 is not too bad. So I'll hit here, submit, all the components come in. The beauty, of, the beauty aspects too from this end is that it doesn't end here. What I can actually do, I can actually start to adjust quantity size here. So I can say I'm going to need two of those. I'm probably going to need here 10 of these 
and whatnot. I probably need like here four of these and so on and so forth. So just like you would do when you're shopping on Amazon, kind of similar aspect here as well, but it doesn't end there. From here, what I can do is I can add this to my device list. So here, when I click and add to my device list, what will eventually happen is that in my project data environment, under my part here the, and device, I'll have my device list with all the components that were added in and I can start to use them from this environment here. So I know I need here an overload, so I can grab this guy, drag and drop it out, toggle it, and then just go ahead and place it. So I got one in, I got another one in, and as you can see, the numbers start uh, decreasing. And of course, if I uh, go past my amount, if I just place randomly, now I'm at zero, past the amount, I'll get a negative sign. So this is kind of nice for some users out there who basically want to benefit from uh, you know, having kind of a list of, of objects or, or components that they need to use. Similar would uh, play in effect as, as well with the terminate, uh, terminals. So here, if I grab some terminals, drag and drop them out, and as you can see, very easy for me uh, to use these and, and basically start to place them. So the benefits from using an integrated catalog, if you will, of component information that is very intuitive and very easy to use. All right, so from this aspect, uh, we place these components in, um, that's basically the schematic standard way of designing. What if we move up, move it up a notch? So let's go to our machine layout here. And we have a section of our machine that we need to basically build. But of course, we don't have necessarily the schematic design already made. We have an idea of the concept of the components that we need. And based on that idea, that concept, we have pre-engineered a certain aspects that we're going to need for certain objects that we need for these, for this machine to work. An example would be a motor. So if I grab here a motor drive, I have a little image. So I know for a fact that I want to place a motor in this environment here. So here I need a motor that's going to uh, operate my conveyor system. And this motor being in, in different sections, I can actually assign it to a different section of my machine that I've pre-configured in my pre-planning phase. So in my pre-planning aspects, in my pre-planning phase, I have these different sections of the machine pre-configured. And I can actually add that in and basically now that will be assigned to the particular section that I want it to be assigned to. And of course, I have placeholder objects that can determine different values and variables that I can choose. So all this pre-engineering concept that we've done in the past, we've captured it, and now we're just reusing it in our future projects. So I'll just add that in. I'll add another motor here. That'll be for my section two. And I'll add a third, yeah, that's fine. Same power, no problem. Add another one here. That'll be for my section three. Bring it in, hit okay and the same HP, it's not a problem. I can also work with um, pneumatics. So here I have a cylinder and I can actually add a cylinder in here. I need another one down here and that gets populated and brought in. So from a napkin sketch, I can start to pre-configure my project with all the information required that I will need to basically produce this, this, this design. If I look here at a, a report, as I'm building the, the information, a report is getting generated. And these are all my planning objects. My planning objects contain information that the information uh, that I've pre-engineered in, in previously. And to give you a better understanding of how that works, if I look here at my pre-planning um, navigator and I look at the motor drive that I placed into the schematics, in the properties, I can I, I determine specific in, information also that could be used for quoting purposes. So not only do I use this tool to do uh, design and to do uh, my, my documentation, but I can also use this in a quoting phase. So all this information, again, is pre-engineered by you. You know you need these uh, I.O. inputs that you can assign with the different uh, function text information for that object. You can assign macros for um, electrical schematic uh, aspects of the design as well. So all this pre-engineering that you've done in the past, now, uh, like Lego blocks, we can start to implement it and use it. The benefit here, of course, is that um, in the pre-planning aspect of things, what we can do is when we're looking at a machine layout, We've placed our cylinders in section two, and right now our cylinders are just pretty much sitting out there in space. We can grab them here, and very easily we can just grab those two cylinders, drag them into the section two, and now they belong to the right environment. As we're producing this documentation and this information and visually getting a better understanding and we're creating this documentation, we can now start to do our design. 
since we've already pre-engineered schematic information, we can now move over to, let's say, the cylinder, the pneumatic pages, and grab my cylinders here from the pre-planning navigator, drag and drop them out because I already have documentation that are pre-engineered. These macros were already preconceived, and I can go ahead and place them into the schematic. So as you see, not only by building the concepts that I've considered in the past and, and, and uh, attached them to these environments, to these pre-planning objects, now my design work is that much easier. If I go over to the machine layout, so if I look at this schematic sheet here for my motors, I can grab the motors and I can actually just drag and drop them out. And since I have electrical schematics already pre-configured for those, I all I have to do is just drop them in, right? So very simple, um, easy aspects of using this, the, this, this, this tool. Again, looking at the information that you're putting in here, very easy drag and drop functionality, uh, you know, no coding, no scripting, no commands you got to worry about and whatnot. So, of course, here I'll add in my third motor, drag and drop it in as I did before. And I can even grab my cylinders because my cylinders have not only do they have pneumatic aspects, but they also have electrical aspects. So, of course, they're not going to work on their own. They're going to need some electrical power. <clears throat> Some of these objects have um, solenoids that are maybe activating those cylinders. So if I open up here my device uh, navigator, and if I right click here with my solenoid, synchronize selection, the solenoid is associated here. If I go back to my pneumatic page, those pneumatic uh, objects that I brought in, they're here, they're in the pneumatics uh, environment, but the solenoids haven't been assigned yet. I can basically just grab this object and use the assign function to assign it to this solenoid here. And now if I right click on this object, go to counterpiece, there is now a direct link. So I have the electrical aspects tied in with the pneumatic aspects and tied into my pre-planning environment, all in one environment. I didn't have to open up another tool and whatnot. Another aspect of course is um, how do I, I brought in this uh, PLC information. I don't have any rack data. Um, the connection points are 111. So there's a little bit of engineering on the PLC side of things. So how can I produce this inside the ePlan space? So obviously what I can now do is I can probably even communicate with a different tool. So if I look at the Studios 5000 environment and I basically create a, a rack layout, the beauty about the, using the ePlan information that I pre-engineered pre, pre um, is basically the fact that I am producing information automatically, not only for the cost estimates, so I can get a, a better understanding of, the, of how, how much this would cost, how much time it would take, but I can also size my PLC project. I know I need um, 10 digital outputs and I need 13 digital inputs. So already right now I can size my PLC project. So if I go back to the PLC environment and I log and I bring in here, I'll just filter 1756. I know I need an A4 rack. Just grab that in, drag and drop it in. Um, I'm going to grab a controller, L74. Sounds good. Heard good things about it. Um, need a digital input, of course. So I can grab here um, IB16, slap that in there. And I need a digital output. So since I needed uh, 13 uh, IO outputs, I can br bring those in. And of course, I can tie these objects in using this application. Again, the benefit here is, is that I'm not using complex coding or scripting uh, to be able to make these things work. Um, the, the, the aspect that I can use mouse-driven technology really, really, really uh, makes my day. So from this space, I have this information in there. It's already pre-configured, pre-assigned. What I can then do is grab this and export it. I can export this file out in a AML environment. And here I'm going to call it uh, webcast demo 2020. I don't know if I use that, save that. So that information is saved in an AML space. What I can then do is inside the ePlan environment, if I look at my um, PLC IO, as I mentioned earlier, they were not tagged. Was, they were not assigned to any card yet. I didn't have any information associated to it uh, prior. So if I do, what I can do from this aspect here now is I can now go into the PLC environment since I created a file in another tool. Well, basically what I can do now is I can import that. So I'm gonna go here, select my file, open and bring that in. We got four components came in, one CPU. As you can see, seamless integration with other applications really helps me uh, uh, to produce my, my projects really faster and quicker.
So if I look at the PLC um, navigator, I do have the capability of seeing here station ID. I have a PLC configuration visualization in a rack kind of way. I can always uh, look here under view and look at a DT oriented way. And of course, I do have all my different IOs that are already in my project. And what I need to do is I need to assign them to the IO to the cards that came in from my import and basically assign those so that they can match. What I'll do here is I'll select my filter for my digital inputs, select all my IOs that are in my project, and basically here under project data, I can connect those blockwise. So I can grab these uh, IO points. I know I have here 13, so I'm gonna place those with our digital inputs. And I'm gonna grab here my 13 uh, digital inputs. There we go. And that's going to be assigned. So we can see here we have one, 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 but they will turn into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's going to be assigned. I hit OK. And now I have rack information, slot information, and pin number. So I can proceed to do the same thing with the output cards. Grab the same thing here outputs, project data, PLC, do the same thing, and now assign it to my digital output card. So as you can see, um, the idea here is. You know, very, very simplistic way of proceeding to do these, um, uh, you know, connectivity with different applications and so on and so forth, get the information correct. So if I look here at my um, input cards, everything's looking good. Uh, rag zero, slot two, I'm done. My PLC information has been completed. So from this aspect, the benefit that we have, of course, is to be able to uh, integrate with other applications out there. Now, if I move on to uh, panel design, so if I look at panel design here, I got a junction box that's on my conveyor system. What I can do, uh, I can actually start to build this. One of the beauties about having this capability inside the ePlan space is that we can actually access here uh, different aspects of uh, components that are available to me. So if I look for a particular component here, I'm looking at a retail junction box. So one of the benefits of using some of the applications and the configurators inside the data portal is of course that you have the capability of custom configuring these objects that you might technically have to do if you're using applications which are you know um, using catalogs or or, or different uh, web pages. But what I can do in my environment is I can basically all do all this in one space. So I know I want that enclosure. That's the one that I want and I can configure it. I can add different accessories. And since this is all pre-assigned to the particular component that I need, it's very simple. These are the only options available for me. So I'm gonna add some wall, uh, some brackets. I'm gonna add some hinges. They're all getting added into this space. I'm gonna add a back plate. This information is gonna get added. So very easy for me to pre-configure and get this job done a lot quicker. So if I move to the last bit of this, and I'm gonna generate the ePlan data, so the benefit, of course, is that as you're configuring in the background, there is a system that's putting all these selections and all these uh, you know, components that we selected, it's putting them all together and basically allowing me to bring that into my environment. I don't have to use a third party tool. I don't have to go you know, use a catalog and manually put this information in together myself. That time consumption is basically taken away from me. And the benefit that I see as a user is that the less time I spend trying to hunt for information, the you know the quicker my day is going to be. It's going to go by. So now that that information is there, um, I'm going to close here my uh, data portal, and I'm just going to place my enclosure wherever it's supposed to go. And basically, from this environment, uh, very easily you can see my enclosures ready to go with my components that I selected, and I can move on to insert um, some. Uh, information. So this is a 3D application. It has nothing to do with any like SolidWorks or, you know, heavy 3D modeling applications out there. We're really trying to make it as simple as we can for our engineers that are, you know, producing this kind of work. Um, if I insert here a wire duck, so I'm going to insert a wire duck from the data portal, maybe that I got previously. And basically I'm not going to do too much in it. Just drag it, place it in there. Maybe copy this one here. Place another one down there, slap another one here, hit the tab key, look, touch the lip. I'm going to insert here a wire duck, a thin rail now. Grab that one, looks good. Size it the same, position it in the middle. 
Yes, I know it is touching. We do have collision check and it's it will warn you, but the benefit here is that I can always resize that. So I can hit here my resize button and resize it in accordance. So very quickly, I can produce panel information and I can also start to bring that information in. So if I look here um, on place parts and I look at my terminal strips here and I can grab here my terminal strip, drag and drop it in. You want to place them all yeah sure go ahead and all those terminals will go in and very easy for me to have a bill of materials a panel layout 2d and uh, generation of this very easy for me to, to look into now of course from this environment one of the benefits that we also have of integration as we looked at previously um, in the in the, um, in the presentation was the harness aspect so in this particular panel environment for my conveyor system there's a harness that needs to be produced and what i can look at here in the terminal strip navigator is that this particular terminal strip if i look at here the terminal strip that's placed in my in my panel layout um, is ready and has some information that i can assign to it so here i can generate a terminal strip um, terminal strip definition and i can assign this to my wire heart to my to my harness for my junction box so that information uh just double check yeah i didn't click here click double click so that'll be assigned to my harness for my junction box and similarly i can do the same thing for all uh objects i can grab here i've got a little button that will assign that to junction box one and of course my connections also might also need to be associated to junction box one so that I can that I can be generating um, harness information. Similarly to the connector that I have here. So if I look here at my plug navigator, I look at the connector here and um, synchronize selection. So I have this uh, plug uh, connector. I can look at the plug definition. I got part data assigned for it and also have as association to my wire harness information. So the benefit here that you have as an ePlan user is that if I look at the connection navigator and I look at the wire harness navigator, I add a new JB, wire, JB harness. So here I'm going to assign a new wire harness. And I'm basically going to call this guy JB1. So I can make the link between that. All the objects associated to the wire harness JB1 are now integrated and inside my environment. The benefit here is that now I can move on to the harness design space. So we're looking at the harness pro D environment. And as you can see, I have all the uh, harness equipment. That's uh, all my components that are there. And all I need to do now is bring in the harness information from my electric space. So I can move on here to the file and basically import and select the project that I'm working with. So I can create a link between the project that I'm working with in ePlan and the harness pro D environment. So now the data will be uh, tra seamlessly transferred over. So whatever I'm doing in an electric environment will also have a certain reflection in the harness space. So this for a lot of users who are using this kind of environment, who need to do this kind of work is crucial. So by importing and making that connection to that particular project that I'm working with, I see all the objects that belong to junction box one. I can actually click here to commit. So that's already created. And I can basically start to place my uh, connectors. So if I look here at this connector, I can click on it. And that basically brings that connector, attaches it to my mouse. I can place objects via surface. I have a multitude of different ways of producing this. I can also connect objects to mounting points. So I did that and I basically have a mounting point here and that connector basically goes in and I'm good to go. If I look here at the enclosure, there's a thin rail here and I have some terminal strips. So I can, if I look here at my terminal strip here, I can grab this object and place it. So I can grab this here and place it on the surface. Basically, I'll, I'll place it here. And the next ones that I'll place, I'll use instead of surface placement, I'll use a uh, connection, uh, um, I'll use point surfaces. So a little bit like, you know, putting these Lego blocks together. So these devices will have that information and that specification <clears throat> assigned to it. So the idea here is as you're putting these together, um, basically you're building up whatever needs to be inside the harness space thing that you will notice is that the wire information is missing and so my connections are not being automatically produced because there's information that's missing for these components so hmm, we can take a look at that let's go take a look here and of course if i look at the terminal information the terminal information doesn't have any connection point data so the system doesn't know where would you like me to place these wires i don't know connection point one or two or whatever so 
this is a nice way for us to confirm going into a project and basically say, okay, these go to connection point one and two. That's going to be assigned. Doesn't need to be displayed, but it is there. It exists. So of course, if I go back to my harness environment and I basically um, reload this, so basically kind of like a refresh here, read in the information again, you will notice now that my connections are now uh, associated. So now the system sees those and I can click on that and now my connection will be made. All right. And of course, the idea behind this when you're putting these together is that as you're placing these objects in and you're placing them and connecting them in, the connections automatically are um, active. So the idea here is that as you're producing this information, there is a direct link between what's been done in the uh, electrical space and whatnot. And of course, from this environment, very seamlessly and easy, as you can see, uh, to manipulate, I can start to lay down my uh, harness my, and basically uh, lay down my route. So if I look here, I got a little component here that I can route to, to the surface, just very basically just roughly sketch it over very easily, place it here, make a little snake action going over here, make a sharp left or right and conclude that connection. And of course, at any point in time, I can always add um, a little bit more connection points here or control points as they call it, and basically just you know adjust this and make it a little bit more uh, intuitive. So the benefit of course, is that the information that now has been placed, I can now tell the system to automatically route those wires and those wires will actually route in accordance. The data that's been associated now to these objects can now be used to produce information such as a, a nail board design. So here I can now go and basically click on file and generate my nail board design. So for someone who is doing harness design and needs the electrical information, this is crucial. And this really, the intuitiveness that we have to be, be able to share the data in that ePlan platform space and allowing you to produce this level of documentation seamlessly and, and rapidly is, is huge in the case of productivity and, and when you want to be in a, in a competitive world, if you will. And of course, the harness is already produced. I got some information. I got the color of the conductors being assigned. So that's very nice for me. I want to see here place uh, from to list. I want to maybe place a bill of material. All this is information is intuitive. So for somebody who's who needs to do this manually, very time consuming in my environment, very easy to do and very easy to operate. Now, of course, from this environment here, it's very nice that we can do all these things. And of course, we can also start to produce additional documentation. So here I can tell the system to go ahead and uh, do my wires. So generate here wire routing, uh, wire numbering, sorry. So the wire number information gets assigned. I can also tell the system to produce uh, report documentation. So here I have a little button that runs the script. These, this is an automated processing, which is basically an, an integrated function with inside ePlan. So there's no quote unquote scripting necessarily that you got to do when you select the options available, it'll produce that script. So it's embedded in the system. You generate that, we're going to get some documentation that's going to be produced. And we're also going to get a PDF that's going to be automatically generated. So here looking at some from two lists, looking at some terminal diagrams, maybe looking at some uh, bill of materials here real quick. And the benefit too, is that we can actually have additional information associated to the bill of material and to the documentation that we're producing. As you can see here, we got some QR codes. And if you actually scan the QR code, so this is a very, uh, uh, not only is it uh, informative, but um, you know you can actually uh, use your phone right now, scan the QR code, anyone that you have there uh, and click on the link and you should have additional information show up on that particular component per se. So if you think about it, wrap your head around the maintenance aspect of things, this is huge for a lot of users out there. And of course, having that information produced um, in a, in a in a document way, if I look here at my um, PDF, if I look here at my PDF, I got the information assigned and basically all ready to go, and I have a PDF automatically generated. So huge benefit on that aspect. From this aspect too, what we can then do is move it over um, to generate information in association to labeling. So we do have components that have uh, push buttons. We do have components that have terminals and wires. And what I can do is I can actually select the project, go here to project complete and export this to my um, Phoenix contact marking tool. 
So again, as you're seeing here, the idea is to help you guys understand the benefit of having this data bucket, this ePlan platform, if you will, and being able to share this information with a multitude of different departments, if the case may be. If you're a small shop or if you're a big shop, you're always communicating information with someone. So the benefit of having this integrated this way is really crucial and key for a lot of you out there. So my wire numbers are there, already ready to print. I look at my push button data, already good to go. I look at my terminal marking data, good to go. I can hit print or the guy in the shop floor will have this information ready for him. Again, seamless integrations with other applications. And to top this all off, and, and uh, we discussed this in, uh, in, in previous examples, we look at the um, eView uh, way of sharing the documentation. So if I grab my project, access my eView portal inside my ePulse environment with inside the ePlan space, we can actually grab the project and basically upload it into my ePlan um, environment. So here I can give it a little note. This is going to be version one added in. And as you can see, the benefit of grabbing my project and bringing it into the, into the cloud will give um, birth to easy ease of use connectivity with um, maybe my, my customer, maybe a different department head. Um, one, one of the aspects that you can think about is if anybody needs to uh, sign off on certain changes or maybe uh, need to look at it really quickly, one of the biggest times consumptions that we have nowadays is the fact that when we need to have someone um, you know, communicate information to us really quickly, what ends up happening is that, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow, but you, know, you wait two, three days and nothing happens. So sometimes people forget and sometimes people are really busy. So one of the aspects here is to give a seamless and ease of use tools so that people can do this in a seamless environment, right? So if I need to mark this project, so this project is uploaded to the cloud and ready to be used by, uh, maybe viewed by my customer. What my customer can then do is he can basically access here. Um, I'm just going to show you here what an iPad. Maybe he's waiting at the, at the plane, at the terminal. He's waiting for his plane to arrive. And through his iPad, he can access the ePlan project. So he will log in. And the idea here is he doesn't need to uh, have a, a laptop software installed. He basically just, he can use his laptop in a web browser. And that's basically the concept here. So we select the project, we open it up. And through this eView environment, the user can basically toggle through the different aspects of the project and see and really pinch and zoom and take a look at the different uh, components used. He can click maybe here um, on, if I go here to the machine layout, and I basically select here uh, my component. Let's say here I'll select my, my push button. There'll be information about that device. Um, if I go to my page eight here, I place this component in. If I select that, I scroll down, there's information about the data portal uh, aspects. And I can really, uh, when we're looking at maintenance uh, environment, this is huge for a lot of users. So this is all at your fingertips. And of course, the user can see the panels if, if he needs to. So he can take a look at the panel, uh, pinch and zoom, and really have a clear cut understanding of what's going on. Of course, in this aspect too, what the user can do is he can go to the machine layout he may be looking at an, an I.O. point and he needs to move spares around. So very rapidly, very quickly, he can actually redline this environment and he can say, okay, this needs to be changed to maybe pin 10. So change. Pin 10. Save it. And of course, I can still move it. I'm in uh, reposition and make it all nice and neat and basically set my status to review and put a comment, I.O. change. All this information is being tracked. As you can see in the history, everything is being tracked and taken into consideration. So that's been assigned. What then happens is that inside the eView space for this project, we have users that are assigned to this project. So we can assign multiple users that will have access to this project. The benefit here is that they're all logged in with their um, email addresses. So any changes and modifications that are done will be associated and will be notified automatically. So you don't have to wait two, three days for someone to say, oh, well, I forgot to, I didn't have time. I didn't see your email, blah, blah, blah. The changes were done. You can access now the project here, webcast demo, open it up. And I look here at my red line. And now this red line here that I created inside my iPad, hypothetically speaking, while I was waiting for the airplane, now I can move in and do the needed changes. So he wants me to change this to IO pin 10, 
grab this, change it to pin 10, hit OK, job's done. And now I can actually change this to review. And I can say here, this is going to be approved and I can put some comments and whatnot. So basically the idea is to have clear cut communication uh, with our different department heads. And of course, this information is crucial and huge because not only do you get a lot of information is that this data is also being updated all the time. So if I look at my PLCIO card here now and I grab an overview page, so if I insert an overview macro and I drop it in, the information is reflected. My pin 10 now is going to be modified and adjusted and all the information that has to be uh, put in is going to be up to date. All right. So um, in a nutshell, hopefully this kind of gives you an understanding of what uh, this application uh, can do. And really the idea and the benefit here, of course, is to be able to um, give everyone out there um, a, a bigger understanding of the processes in place, right? So when you're looking at component manufacturing information, whether you're a panel builder, where you're a, you're a systems integrator, you're, we're all doing this kind of environment separately. And the idea really of the ePlan uh, space is to be able to do all these aspects seamlessly in one environment. Hopefully this really gives you a, a clear cut demonstration. There's a lot more that it can do. And hopefully this uh, will now, uh, you'll have a better understanding of what we can do. All right, so um, on the um, digital ecosystem, any questions, uh, Andrew? First of all, Sergio, thank you so much for that amazing presentation. I've seen you <laughs> present many full amounts of times, but every single time you wow me. So kudos to you for that. Uh, we do have a bunch of questions actually. So the first question, is there a good way to grab whole patterns for the back panel layout? Yeah, so a very good question. And these are, uh, again, due to the fact of uh, the aspects of, of design work is when you're doing this environment, when you're working in, the, uh, in these uh, spaces, there's a lot of data in the background. So every component that we download off the data portal abides by a certain standard. And in the certain standards, there's um, manufacturing specs. So if you're looking at a component, you got connection point information. If you're looking at uh, mechanical hardware, you're looking at drilling information. And this drilling information is also assigned to the component. So the data is in the object inside the ePlan space. How do I benefit from that? Well, basically, if I actually view this, uh, hit OK. So if I actually view here and I say, uh, show me the drill view, all that information is right there and ready to go. So since that information was placed by the system and I didn't have to worry about it because you have to worry about it somewhere down the road. I don't have to because it's automated. And of course, now what I can do is I can go to machining and I can actually go here and export it in different NC formats. Or even if I don't, you know, if I'm a small mom and pop shop, I can basically grab here, drilling template as a PDF, prints on a plotter and basically tape it over the back plate and use it. an amazing explanation thank you i hope that answers your question next question are there any security concerns when uploading projects to the cloud right so this is a question that's very good it always it comes up a lot and um, one of the key aspects of course is uh, there's a lot of information for the users out there who have these kinds of questions so you can always go into the ePlan epos uh, website and there's a lot of information uh, about that. So if you look at the uh, FAQs, there's a lot of information as to, you know, uh, what, it, what is this? What is that? How does it work? Is it safe and whatnot? We are using Microsoft Azure. Um, there are a whole bunch of safety protocols in place. We do have documentation available for the IT departments that are kind of like, you know, questioning this. And of course, the idea is um, you guys are already uploading pictures to Instagram, of course, we're doing that on a daily. Um, you guys are also doing internet banking. So since this is part of our, um, is part of our realm nowadays, um, yeah, we abide by those systems and those security. So there are here, how does uh, ePulse isolate customer security? So you have here some information and you can read up on it. You can also contact uh, the ePlan team. They'll be more than happy to fill you in and maybe get you the right person to talk to on security. So on to the next. What happens when a manufacturer or manufacturer's parts are not in the data portal? How do we get this in there? So there, there, there are a few ways of going by it. One of the, one of the tricks that I use as a, from an ePlan user standpoint is somebody in here has the same type of part. 
So what I do is I'll access that part that is similar, and basically I'll bring it into my ePlan environment and I'll, I'll modify it. So you do have access, nothing is tied down, nothing is, is, uh, is, is locked up. The information can be modified and customized. But you also have the capability of bringing that data in yourself or creating that data inside uh, the ePlan space. So if you're creating a part, super simple to create. Uh, you can use a black box with an image file or like or something like this. Um, associate the pin, give it a little bit of you know nice little pizzazz with some images. And on the object itself, you can right click and generate the part. So this part's already generated, but if I was doing this from scratch, I would bring in a black box, put in some pins, drop in an image file, right click, generate part. Of course, I put part number and, but at least the basics are there and enough for you to create that part and generate the building material that you need at the end of the day. On to the next question. Can you translate a whole project with the translation dictionary? And also how long does this typically take? No, it's not long. And, that, and that's the beauty about it is the fact that the translation aspects, as I demonstrated earlier, are, are so seamless that the language information is there. And if there's any words that I, that you put into the project, you have a tool in the translation features that you can export a missing word list. And what this is going to create is that inside your project, you have some words that you typed in in English that you didn't have necessarily in the dictionary. So this will pop it up into an Excel spreadsheet or a, it, it's a text file. What you're going to do is you're going to grab this text file with the two columns. It has an English column and let's say in this case, a German column, which the German column is obviously going to be empty. You grab this file, give it to your translator. He's going to translate it, send it back to you. And basically, you're going to import that back into your project. Your dictionary will be updated for future reference, so you don't have to do this all the time. And basically, it's just a flip of the switch. There's no scripting, so whenever you do this action, it's on, it's instantaneous. You don't, If you have a 2,700-page project, it's instantaneous. You don't have to wait 20 minutes for a script to run. And the benefit here also is the fact that exporting documentation. So if I go here uh, to manufacturing data and I want to export, let's say the bill of materials uh, that I worked with, well, I don't know, bill of materials, let's say I want to export it, I can export it in multiple languages. So if my, uh, maybe my customer, my colleague, or maybe another subsidiary in another company requires a bill of material, hey, what, how, how, how good am I going to look like when I actually produce this in the language of their choosing, I'm going to be a star. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. So on to the next question. When you drop, when you drop in a device with the macro, how do you grab that exact part from the physical layout? Um, if I drop a part from a macro, say that again. When you drop in a device with the macro, mm -hmm. how do you grab that exact part for the physical layout? Well, that's the beauty is that, um, okay, I get it. Um, what happens is, of course, in this environment, um, what's happening and what's being produced is as you're dropping the components in, the data is being associated to it. This data is coming in from, the, from either the data portal or maybe information, if it's a part that's not in the data portal, you create it. And the idea here is that the parts database inside the ePlan space um, has a, um, a whole sleuth of uh, different um, uh, component data information. Uh, this abides by the E-Class standard. And if you look here at a component, and I show you here, there's a whole bunch of tabs. So the E-Class standard will give you information not only about the device and certification data that you might need. So here I have certification information. This is really nice because if I produce a bill of material and I need to have the certifications assigned, I'm going to have to look for it, look in a binder, look into the, in the, in the internet, hunt for that information. But in my case, it's all in one space. So of course, this information that's there is ready to be used. And the same thing goes for the macro. So the macros of the part, or basically, if we look at it this way, the part will contain all the macros that I need for all the different environments, whether I'm doing panel design. And if I look here, whether I'm doing here's a macro for the schematic or the, 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 the 2D aspect and uh, so on and so forth. So a lot of data that is inside that component that allows me to basically drop these objects in a 3D space. Excellent, thank you for that answer. So the next question, um, to get all of these tools that were shown, would we need to get the platform version? Question mark, we are using electric. 
So I, I assume that it's electric P8. Um, so Sergio, if you could go to the first slide where it shows all of the, all of the uh, products. Let me do that. Uh, show. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively simple to explain. So basically the ePlan platform is already installed, whether you have P8, whether you have pro panel, whether you have harness, whether you have fluid, whether you have, uh, what, what do you have pre-planning fluid, electric and pro panel. So these all basically, you know, you're communicating through the platform. Basically the platform is there when you install, uh, the different gamuts of ePlan, it's installed in your system. It's basically, um, a, a, fo a folder where we drop data in and basically the, 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 the database aspect of the ePlan environment, which is proprietary to it which is using the ISAM, what is it, ISAM database core produced by uh, IBM a while ago and so on and so forth. That's the, that, that's the goal. The, this information is just basically finding that data, reading it in, and then using it in a different space. So you have Electric P8, the platform's in there. The only thing you have to do next is tie the other tools to your Electric P8. That, for that, you would access different modules and whatnot. To expand on that, uh, for instance, if you have electric PA, you already have the platform. So if you want to, if you're interested in getting uh, ePlan pre-planning or ePlan fluid or pro panel, there's add-ons that are called modules that we can add on to electric PA. So at the very end of the presentation, it'll have my email address. Uh, you can email me directly and I can put you in contact with uh, your dedicated account manager and then they can actually speak to you further in detail about next steps, possible products um, that would benefit you the most. So on to the next question, and I, I hope I answered your question, by the way. All right, thank you everyone, and uh, for sparing your time. Really appreciate you guys stick, stand, uh, sticking around and listening to me jab, jabber. Um, thank you, Andrew. Thank you everyone, Debbie, Jessica on the line. Uh, nothing but love for you guys and uh, have a nice day, uh, everyone. Hey, before we adjourn, if you are not connected or following us on LinkedIn, go to ePlan USA in the search bar, click the follow. We will have the most up to date information for the live weekly webinars. We are in the process of developing podcasts. They're entertaining, exciting, and they will also have additional information about everything else that, that is going on. So please search. Click the follow. Um, also, uh, fortenberry.a at eplanusa.com. Shoot me an email for any topics that you would like to be for us to discuss or go over on future podcasts or webinars. And also for any additional information, you can send an email to info at eplanusa.com. That's I-N-F-O at eplanusa.com. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I hope to see you next week and have a wonderful evening, day. Be safe and until next time.